and welcome back my beautiful froggy army to another video. I have a history of creating and crafting things out of squishmallows and some people think it's cursed and a crime and some people want to see more. And if you clicked on this video, chances are you wanted to see Peach interrupt me and you also want to see more squishmallow crafts. So I have been on the hunt for the past couple of months for some five inch squishmallows for a cursed squishmallow craft that I've been talking about and just never doing. So finally I have sourced enough squishmallows from goodwill for this project plus one or two from my personal collection just to round off the numbers but you saw the title you saw the thumbnail let's just get straight into making a tote bag out of squishmallows Let's start off with our wonderful volunteers. Now, like I mentioned, I found most of these five inch squishmallows at Goodwill. And yes, I could have left them there and they would have gone to loving homes that would have loved them, cherished them, played with them. Definitely not do any cursed crafts that involve taking them apart and ripping out their insides. No. Definitely not. Anyways, we're gonna start off by seam ripping all of the Squishmallows. Now I start on their little booty area because it's just easier for me to start there. And I like to take the very bottom piece off first so that I can take out all the stuffing. And then that way it's just easier to seam rip the rest of the way. And what I mean by the rest of the way is I want to seam rip basically the front and the back so that they're separate pieces. So once I take out all of the stuffing, it's this nice little flap of skin and then I am going to take my seam ripper and go along like that horizontal line that divides the whole squishmallow in half. That way I have the front just like this. There we go. And we have the back. So we have two separate pieces. And I'm going to repeat that process for every single squishmallow. Yes, this was a lot of seam ripping. Yes, this is like a travel size seam ripper. So it made it a little more difficult, but it's okay. We just rip and pull and there we go. We get our nice pieces of squishmallow flesh. So with my nine squishmallows that I started off with, once I finished this process, I had 18 total pieces of squishmallow fabric slash disassembled squishmallow body parts. So now slapping those onto my cutting board, we're going to take this little fabric block piece. Listen, I am not a sewing connoisseur, okay? I learned all of this from my friend Mary who taught me everything when we did our squishmallow blanket video, so you should check that out if you haven't. But I'm using this so that I can cut out consistent shapes with all of the squishmallows. I want them all to be this three by three square. So I'm using that as a template to cut all of them out. And I did have lots of visitors while I was doing this from my cats, but basically that's all I'm doing. I'm using this little rotary cutter and just slicing along the fabric. I don't know why it's so difficult, but it's difficult for me, okay? And I struggled, but we got through it. We got through it. I'm also still testing out my new camera that I bought. So forgive me if there's any inconsistencies with lighting, focus, focusing, etc. I know there's a little bit of that in this video. I'm still working out the kinks and getting used to it, so thanks for your patience. But yeah, if you watch the Squishmallow Blanket video, this is basically a smaller condensed version of everything we did in that video. So after I finish cutting out all the square pieces of Squishmallow fabric, I'm going to take these squares, I'm going to lay them back down on my cutting mat, and I'm using this tool that I don't know the name of to put holes on the side. As you can see, we poke some little tiny holes in the side there, and this tool like puts these holes that are perfectly spaced on all sides and you just gotta run it across like it's a little slicer, you know? So that's what I'm doing. And this is going to allow me to crochet with some yarn into those holes and basically make a border all the way around the piece of Squishmallow fabric. The exact same thing that I did for my Squishmallow blanket. This is so I have an easier time making this tote bag because listen, I don't know how to sew. I don't have a sewing machine because I could just take these pieces of fabric and sew them together with needle and thread you know? But one, I don't have a sewing machine, like I mentioned, so I would have to hand sew that. And two, I'm very bad at hand sewing, so it would just be real messy. My true skills lie in crochet, so if I can combine that, I will incorporate crochet into anything, let me tell you. It just makes it so much easier for me. So that's why we're doing this. And hey, it worked for the blanket, I can do it again. And also granny square totes or some sort of crochet square 
tote is very popular so I thought this would kind of be a little homage like a little granny square tote as well. So now I'm taking a size H hook and just some random white yarn that I have and we are going to crochet a border all along these little pieces of fabric. Now I'm choosing white because we have kind of a mix of colors here and I thought white would just be the most neutral and allow the squishmallow pieces of fabric to shine. So sometimes with the little like rotary cutter that I use to put the holes in it, I would sometimes do it too close to the edge and then the hole wouldn't have enough fabric on the top part of it and when my hook goes into the hole it would just break the fabric if that makes sense. So sometimes I would have to poke a new hole into the fabric and I just use a pair of scissors to do that and just kind of like wiggle it in there and poke a hole and then all is good. At the end of it all I was left with this little cutie square with a little nice crochet border around it. Not all of these squares turned out perfectly square. Now some of them are a little crooked and I think this happened for two different reasons. The first reason was I was just not great at, at pushing down that stencil and keeping everything even. And the second reason is these squishmallow pieces of fabric are obviously from five inch squishmallows that are round shapes. Like this fabric was intended to be round, like the shape of the plushie. So it wasn't intended to lay flat whatsoever. And when I'm trying to get it to lay flat, it doesn't really work and it kind of bunches up underneath of the stencil that I'm using. So to stop it from bunching up, I have to kind of like pull on the fabric a little bit, kind of contort it underneath of that stencil. And I think when I do that, sometimes it pulls a little too much on one side or not enough on another side. And when I slice it up with my little rotary cutter, it's kind of uneven because I was yanking on that fabric a little bit and making it uneven underneath the stencil, if that makes sense at all. But it's okay. It all ended up all right, kind of ish, but <laughs> they're not all going to be super even, which is fine. But anyways, we're trucking along here and we are putting this crochet border on all of these Squishmallow pieces, also including the backsides of the Squishmallows that I cut out as well. Not just the faces, but also the backsides because we are going to use these for the front and back of the tote bag. The faces are going to be the front and the backs of them are going to be the back, if that makes sense. And also for this border, just to make sure it wasn't stretching the Squishmallow fabric pieces too much, I was doing one half double crochet, chain one, and then half double crochet again all along the border. And once I was finished, we had this nice satisfying stack of crochet squishmallow pieces. Look at that. Saved me so much time from having just to crochet a whole square. Wow, look at that. So next I'm going to figure out how I want to arrange these bad boys. We've got like a weird mix of colors. I didn't specifically source my squishmallows in any specific color, so I'm kind of working with what I got. The color palette definitely could have been a lot cuter if I made the active choice to choose cute colors, but I didn't, so it's fine. So once I found a configuration that I liked, I also uh, took a picture of it just for reference and then did the same with the back sides just so I knew how to sew all of this together. So I am just using a yarn needle and that same white thread and we are just sewing all of these pieces together. As you can see, I have the picture open on my phone so I know that you know, I'm arranging them and sewing them in the correct way. How I like to do this is I like to make one strip at a time, one vertical strip at a time. And once I have all the strips, then I sew all of those together. I don't know, for me, it's just like the most easy way and feels less intimidating. So after I did that first strip, like I mentioned, I had all of the strips ready to go. Yeah, then we just sew all of these together and it doesn't feel that bad. You know, this was actually pretty quick. I don't really like weaving in ends and sewing pieces together together that much. I tend to avoid it, but this was actually not so bad. So I really didn't mind it. So if you want to recreate this, this part of it's not that bad. I'll tell you from experience. I'm just also using the back loops only to sew all of this together. That way those front loops are still kind of like visible and distinct in the front. I don't know. I just, I just like the look of that. Also, if you like Squishmallow crafts and you want to see me do more, liking this video is the best way to tell me that you enjoy it and you want me to do more. And I will, I will do more. Trust me. Any excuse to cut up some squishmallows and use their guts for something, I will do it. So after I finished all the sewing, I had one big piece and then I repeated the same process for the back sides. And now we have these two panels that we can use to create our squishmallow tote bag. So I'm going to put these right sides facing together. So we have the outsides facing the outside. And this was not the most ideal way to sew these together, but it's what I chose and I was too lazy to undo it all and do it all again. 
but I am half double crocheting these two pieces together. Now you could slip stitch these two pieces together. You could sew these pieces together like I was doing with the yarn needle. I could have made another piece of fabric and put that as like a middle piece to give it kind of like a gusset but I didn't do any of that I just crocheted them together because I felt like that was the easiest and quickest it did lead to some weird kind of shaping which we will get into but uh yeah I I wasn't gonna redo all of it but I think if for some reason you are recreating this I would recommend just sewing it together or making the gusset I think would be the best for the shaping especially if you're not gonna do any sort of blocking for the squares which I don't even know if they would like block themselves because it's also squishmallow fabric I don't really know but yeah once I finished all that I just turned it inside out and kind of poked out those bottom pieces and what I was talking about with the weird shaping the bottom corners yeah those are, are looking a little weird I don't really know what happens, but they they certainly don't look square. That's that's for sure. <laughs> so is it ideal? No, but at this point, I just wanted to finish this project. So next, I wanted to work on some straps. So with this blue cotton yarn, I just started to do five double crochets and make just a super long strip out of that. I chose blue because I felt like the tote bag had a lot of warm colors. So I felt like we needed more cool tones. It was either between this or green, but we did have at least one green square so I was like okay maybe I'll just go with blue so I had this random yarn and I actually hate this yarn <laughs> so I was like let me use this up for something and it's cotton so it'll be nice and sturdy for the straps as well hopefully also side note look at what I picked up in the background here sir pepper being mischievous and going in my closet mm -mm. look at him look at him I didn't even notice and then later once again he just he just emerges out and he's like oh yeah my my exploration time is done. Don't mind me, just chillin'. Just uh mom didn't notice me. Crime has been committed. Who knows what he was doing in there, but I just thought that was so funny. So anyway, making the strap is super simple, just very tedious. You know, if you can double crochet and you can just make a a long strip you got this you got this anyways just working on that finishing up the strap here yes that is my boyfriend laying on my floor he likes to come in my office and just lay on my floor sometimes <laughs> i mean my cats lay on the floor so sometimes he'll lay on the floor to like pet them but it's cute so i went ahead and finished up both straps there we go they're looking great and this is kind of the idea kind of the vision for the bag so before sewing those on i felt like the top of the bag needed an extra like round of half double crochet just going along the top of it so i just did that super quick i had literally just enough white yarn left to do this i used up quite a bit of it for this project which was great so after i finished that extra row i went ahead and sewed these on just using the yarn needle and stuff like that that and I tried to make sure these were extra secure because I was just using like the back bump of a half double crochet to sew these on so it wasn't like super secure but I think it'll be fine I like went back over this and sewed it like 50 million times so I think it'll be fine but anyways this was the final final step so now let's see the reveal presenting another cursed squishmallow craft I would like to formally introduce you to the Squishmallow tote bag. Look at her. She is so beautiful. She's got some freaky little corners, but you know what? It's okay. I enjoyed this project very much and I hope you did too. Please like this video and subscribe on your way out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.